children. Welcome to Tina's Terminology, where we grow our minds together by learning a new word each month. The word for today's episode is gratitude. Gratitude is a noun, which means a feeling of appreciation and thankfulness. For example, I feel gratitude for my family, friends, and warm cups of coffee in the morning. Stay tuned for more examples of the word gratitude. Hey guys, it's me, Sky again, and you can see that I'm in the holiday spirit. I'm here at the Lakeland Police Department to learn about a way that you can make a difference in Christmas for a kid just like you. Let's go inside to check it out. We're inside now with Cindy Sharp, the Community Services Unit Supervisor for the Lakeland Police Department, and Angie Ellis, the Florida Crime Prevention Practitioner. She's going to tell me all about their holiday program, Cops for Kids. So Cindy, what does a Community Services Unit Supervisor do? I have the best job of all. I get to supervise a great team of ladies, and they are the face of the Lakeland Police Department. They are that positive picture out in the community trying to build positive relationships. Um, they do that by attending a lot of events. They involve both children and adults, and they also go out and they're serving as crime prevention by doing neighborhood watch and they do security surveys. With the holidays coming up, the police department has a program called Cops for Kids. What is Cops for Kids? Cops for Kids is an exciting program. Um, we developed it about in 2006, so I would say about 10 years ago, and it was all a way of our police officers serving our underprivileged children at holiday time with gifts that they may not otherwise receive. Where did the idea for Cops for Kids come from? It came about when our police officers were going out into the community and they were seeing children that were underprivileged that were not going to have a Christmas. So they came together and they decided to raise funds to be able to provide a Christmas for those kids. How many kids do you guys help every year? It varies from year to year. We can serve up to 450 kids. Tell me about the donation process. Where and when can we donate toys to help these kids? That's an awesome question. Um, we have donation boxes set up all around the city. One is here at the Lakeland Police Department. They can bring unwrapped toys, brand new, and be able to deposit in our box. It can be stuffed animals, it can be toys. We also have locations at the Lakeland Libraries, the one down on Palmetto and also Larry Jackson. We have it also at City Hall. We also have a box at Lakeland Electric and Kelly Rec. And once toys are donated, how do the kids get them? We have a party for them, and it'll be on Thursday, December 15th, and it's in the evening, so we invite all the children to come that night. They get to meet Santa Claus, and they get to have a photo with Santa. Uh, they'll receive their gifts, and they'll also get a dinner that night. Some of the kids watching might have never had a chance to do community service before. Why would this be a perfect chance to get involved? It's a way of giving to those that might not otherwise have so to ensure that all of our children have a special Christmas. That sounds like such a great program and a great way to celebrate the season of giving. Thank you, Cindy, for telling me about it. <gasps> Look who's here. It's McGruff the Crime Dog. Oh, yay. You remembered to bring the box. Yay. McGruff, are you excited about the Cops for Kids program this year? Will you be at the events for kids to come out and meet you if they donate? That's so exciting. I hope everyone gets a chance to come out and meet you. I've got to run and go buy some toys to donate, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.
everybody, I'm Ariana and I'm here at Exploration's Five Children's Museum for this segment of Senses Overdrive. This is Sue. She's going to help us with our activity today. So Sue, what are we doing? We're going to do a little bit of science today, a little bit okay. of engineering. We are going to design a boat. And the boat. challenge today is to see if your boat or if my boat can hold more weight. So nice. we're going to use foil for our boats and then I have pennies for our cargo. So see if you can figure out and design a boat that a you think boat. first of all is going to float and then that will hold some cargo. Okay. Now we're using foil today. You could also use um, Play-Doh if you had Play-Doh or, or clay. You can do your that because that one just like this can be designed and redesigned. If it, your first design <laughs> doesn't work then you can try a different one and do it a different way. So. So I've got a little triangle shape, but what have you got? That I've got little. a rectangle. Yes. Okay. Are you ready? So first, first trick is going to see do they really float? Okay. So. All right, mine floats and yours does. Yes, they both Ooh. float. All right. What's your hypothesis? Do you think if you add some cargo, is it going to sink or is it going to float? It might sink, I think, or it could float because we okay, have our for sides up. Hypothesis: You have to choose one or the okay. other. <laughs> I choose that it's going to float. All right, so how many pennies do we want to start with? Mm. You want to try with maybe five? Sure, that works. Okay, you get five and I get five. So, one at a time to add to our boat, see okay. what happens. You can put it anywhere in your one. boat that you want. Okay. Okay. So far, so good. Yes. Two. They're not sinking yet. <laughs> All right, they're still floating. Three. Ooh, we might have to use more pennies. All right, three and we're good. Okay, four. All right. Still good. Okay, five, they're moving around a bit. All right, here we go. Let's get some more. There's five more for you, five more for me. Thank Let's keep you. Keep going here. This will be six. Seven. So what made you choose a rectangle for the design of your boat? I wanted it to look kind of like a regular boat, so I went with a rectangle. Okay. okay. And seven, eight. Now, is there any reason that you're putting all your pennies in the back of your boat? Yes, because this side is um, not very <laughs> high up, so I didn't want any water to get in. I see. Nine. So you're using the weight of the pennies to hold up the front of your boat. Yes. Good thinking. Ten. Oh no! Oh, what is it starting to go? Yes. Oh! oh I sunk. So, what was your hypothesis? <laughs> that they would float. Okay, and they did float, right? Yes. And how many pennies did it take to sink your boat? Ten. So, if you took that out, what would you do to redesign your boat to make it better? I'd probably make the walls a bit stronger. Stronger? Yes. Like folded more. Okay. But this is an activity that you can do over and over and over again, just redesigning your boat each time to take care of whatever little flaw it was that you noticed. That's so cool. Thank you, that was so much fun. Good, glad you enjoyed it, even though I beat you. <laughs> if you really want to put your senses into overdrive, then come to Exploration's Five Children's Museum in downtown Lakeland. See you again soon, I'm Ariana, bye. The word gratitude is a noun, which means the state of being thankful. Let's practice some gratitude right now. Get out a pen and a piece of paper and write a letter to someone who gives you a feeling of gratitude. List all of the reasons why you are thankful to have that person in your life. Okay guys, in the last lesson, we learned how to calculate the area of triangles. Before that, we did the area and perimeter of parallelograms. Today, we're gonna take a look at how to calculate the area of a trapezoid. First off, let's start by going over the formula. The area of a trapezoid equals the length of one base plus the length of the parallel base divided by two and multiplied by the height. Now, Let's put that away for just a minute and take a look at a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a shape that has two sides that are parallel to each other and two sides that are not parallel to each other. So, to find the area, we need to take a look at this shape. If this were a parallelogram or a rectangle, we could just take the base at the bottom here and multiply it by the height. But if we do that, you see how 
You see how the edges here go up to, there's too much area when we do that. It's too big of an area. Now, if we take a look at the smaller parallel side and we multiply it times the height, it would only be this tiny little box here in the middle. So we have one parallelogram that's way too big for the area and one parallelogram that's too small for the area. The cool thing here is that the actual area of this shape is exactly right in the middle of those two calculations. So how do we find the middle or the average of that shape? We divide it by two. Now before we jump right into our formula, let's take a bit of a simpler look at this. Let's make the base of the shape here 10. And we'll make the other base four and the height we're gonna make six. So the big parallelogram would be 10 times six. And the small parallelogram would be four times six. So we can add those two together, the shape that is too small and the shape that is too big. And we'll divide that by two to split the difference or get the average. So what we come up with is 10 times six is 60 and four times six is 24. So 60 plus 24 is 84. Now that we've added those together, we divide all that by two and we have 42. So the area of this trapezoid is 42. All right, let's pull that equation back out. So when we look at this equation, it doesn't quite look the same as what we just did. But the truth is, it's actually the exact same thing just written in a different way. Okay, so if we take our base heights here and add them together, 10 plus four, then we find the average of that number. So that's 14 divided by two, which is seven. And then we multiply that times the height of six, and that gives us, look at that, 42. So the area of our trapezoid can be written as the area equals base A plus base B divided by two times the height. Or in simpler terms, the average of the biggest possible parallelogram and the smallest parallelogram. So here's a few trapezoids here on the screen that you can get started practicing with. See if you can use the trapezoid equation to figure out the area of these trapezoids. Oh, this is lovely. Thank you so much. I mean, I know we had a difference of opinion, but you must admit this elegant Christmas background is so much better than that other somewhat tacky one. Oh, is that for me? Oh, you shouldn't have. I mean, an elegant Christmas program without special effects was gift enough, but oh, thank you. Today's story is Agnes the Elf. Right. For centuries, Agnes the Elf had a, held a very important position in Santa's workshop. Agnes was in charge of updating the naughty or nice list. Over the years, this task had become increasingly simple. When she started, any changes to the list were made with a small bottle of ink and a quill. Then, in the late 1800s, came the ballpoint pen. In the 1920s, the typewriter, and in the 1960s, the mainframe computer. Now that Santa keeps the naughty or nice list on his cell phone, Agnes only needed to update the database once a week. As a result, Agnes was getting a little bored and thought it was time for a change, some new challenges and a different career path. Now, as bosses go, Santa is very kind. He listened to Agnes, nodded sympathetically, and in the end suggested that she tour the workshop and let him know what she thought she might like to do. Filled with hope and more than a few of the candy canes Santa kept on his desk, Agnes went in search of her new vocation. Her first stop was the teddy bear room. What? <laughs> Uh, here, 
bears were stuffed and in some cases dressed and then combed and fluffed. It was a wonderful place and full of fun. Unfortunately, it was also full of fur and Agnes was allergic. Ugh. So as much as she would have enjoyed to make bears her new career, Agnes was forced to move on. The doll room was next. Um, this wasn't such a good fit for Agnes, who'd been somewhat of a tomboy and hadn't had much time for dolls when she was young. Still, there were jobs for artist elves to paint faces, seamstress elves to make clothing, and high-tech sections where many of the dolls were programmed to do things. Agnes marvelled at the technical elves who made the dolls talk and laugh or cry and... wet themselves. <clears throat> no, dolls weren't for her either. And then, disaster struck. Santa's workshop had been hacked. Someone had corrupted the naughty and nice database and all children were listed as nice. The elf computer squad worked all night trying to sort out the mess, but in the end, they needed Agnes to help fix it. You see, Agnes never left anything to chance. At the end of every week, she'd made a copy of the list. She handed the copy of the list to the Elf Computer Squad and they brought the database back up with only a week missing. Back at Santa's desk for the second day in a row, Agnes took a candy cane and nibbled it nervously. So, oh, oh Agnes, have you decided what you'd like to do from now on? Santa asked. Agnes was embarrassed. She thought that now, by now, she would know exactly what she wanted to do, but she didn't. She'd left her old job because she was bored and didn't feel important, and yet now, having saved the day, she felt better about her old job. She slowly shook her head in defeat. May I make a suggestion? asked Santa. Agnes nodded. Well, the Elf Computer Squad say they would love for you to work with them. And that way you could keep your old job and maybe learn some new skills. Would that be to your liking? Agnes smiled and nodded. That would be perfect. Well, Santa said, I think that it's fine for next year, but as for this year, as a reward for preserving the naughty and nice list, I think you should ride on the sleigh with me and deliver the toys on Christmas Eve. Agnes's mouth dropped open. What an honour! What a joy! And what a wonderful time she had on Christmas Eve. Oh, I do so love happy endings. Ho, ho, ho!
gratitude is an emotion expressing appreciation and thankfulness for what you have. The more you practice gratitude, the happier you will be. The best way to feel gratitude is to notice new things that you're grateful for every day. I hope that you all have a wonderful holiday. Hey guys, welcome back to Simple Snacks. I'm Bo, and I'm here again with another yummy recipe for you. Today, we're making cracker witches, and they taste as good as they sound. Our ingredients will be saltine crackers, peanut butter, strawberries, and some honey. Make sure that you have a knife to cut your strawberries and spread the peanut butter. First, make two rows of saltine crackers. These will be our base for the cracker witches. Then, with your knife, go ahead and spread the peanut butter on the crackers. Make sure that it's completely covered with peanut butter. If you don't have peanut butter, you can use almond butter or cashew butter instead. Spread the peanut butter on both cracker pears. Now it's time to move to our strawberries. This is where you'll want to have a parent helping you out. Take a sharp knife and slice the fresh strawberries into thin slices. Once our strawberries are neatly sliced, we'll put them on our peanut butter. Only put them on one row of the crackers though. Unless you want double the berry, then that's okay too. You can use strawberries, blueberries, or raspberries. Any kind of berry or fruit that you want to have on your Cracker Witches will taste yummy. We're almost finished with our Cracker Witches, so now we have one more step. We're going to take our honey and squeeze the bottle so that the honey drizzles on the strawberries. Honey is really, really sticky, so we're going to try to be as clean as we can with this honey. It's okay if you get a little on the plate. It doesn't have to be perfect. A little honey is all you need for these crackers, but if you like it sweeter, you can put more honey on there. Now that we've drizzled our honey, let's go ahead and make our sandwiches. Fold over the half without the honey, and you ha and, or strawberries, and you have delicious cracker witches. Wanna take a bite with me? This is so good. I've got to make this for my friends. I'm Bo, and you can join me next time for another simple snack. Hola, bienvenidos a Hablemos Español con Mima. Yo soy Mima. Y él es Antonio. Hola. John Carlo el Búho. Y Hola. Juliana, la rana cubana italiana. Hola. Hi, guys. Hoy vamos a aprender los números. Vamos a aprender a contar. ¿Listos? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Repitan. Uno, Uno dos, dos, tres, tres cuatro, cuatro cinco. cinco. Muy bien. Seis, siete, ocho, nueve, 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Muy bien. 11, 12, 13, 14. 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 y 20. Muy bien. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Muy bien. Ahora vamos a practicar. ¿Cuántos son dos y dos? Juliana. Dos y dos son cuatro. Muy bien. ¿Cuántos son cuatro y dos? Cuatro, cuatro y, y dos, dos son, son seis. Seis y dos son... Son, son ocho. ocho. Y ocho... Son dieciséis. dieciséis. Muy bien. Entonces, vamos a cantar una canción, ¿ok? Dos y dos son cuatro, cuatro y dos son seis, seis y dos son ocho y ocho dieciséis. Dos y dos son cuatro, cuatro y dos son seis, seis y dos son ocho. Perfecto, muy buen trabajo, muy bien. Ahora vamos a contar, vamos a contar al 20, ¿de acuerdo? Muy bien. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. 
4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Eh, los números. Me gustan los números. ¿Les gustan los números? Sí, nos sí, gustan los, los números. números. Ah, fantástico. Recuerden, hablar español es divertido. Speaking Spanish is fun. Adiós. Adiós.